Hello. In this video, we are going to learn how we can exploit the law of large numbers to calculate an approximate probability mass function for a random variable, if we are given a large number of samples for the random variable. We employ this process when we calculate a histogram based on the results of multiple experiments, and you will almost certainly have seen it done before. In the video, however, we are just going to formalise this process by expressing it in the language of random variables that we have been learning during this course. With this in mind, the learning outcome for this video is for you to, at the end, to be able to calculate approximate probability mass functions by constructing a histogram. Furthermore, there will be an associated programming exercise that should consolidate the ideas that have been covered in the video. Without further ado then, let's begin with a bit of revision. Remember that in previous videos I have introduced the notion of a discrete random variable by considering games involving these six individuals. I have explained that the person chosen in the game is random, but that I can assign a probability to picking each of the players. Furthermore, I have called these probabilities P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6. And I have explained that each of these, each of these probabilities is a real number between 0 and 1, and that this set of real numbers can be expressed in the probability mass functions, whose various elements give me the probability of getting a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, the labels that I've used for each of the individuals in the game. When all these pieces are taken together, I have said we can talk about the experiment, the process of choosing a person, in terms of the generation of a random variable from a particular probability distribution. Elsewhere, we have defined the expectation of a random variable, which is a number that we can calculate if we are given the probability mass function. We have seen that the importance of this number, the expectation, stems from a theorem known as the law of large numbers, which tells us that if we generate a large number of random variables from a given distribution, the sum of these random variables, capital Sn, divided by the number n of random variables generated, is equal to the expectation with certainty. In other words, and certain caveats notwithstanding, if we perform an experiment multiple times, the mean converges on the expectation. The purpose of this video is to combine these two ideas and show you how we can use them the law of large numbers, to extract an estimate of the probability mass function. In other words, I want to show you how we can estimate the probability mass function that underlies a particular experiment by performing the experiment multiple times. Quite probably you already know how this is done, but let's work through the maths formally in this stage. Our experiment generates a discrete random variable that has some unknown probability mass function. The outcome of our experiment is thus a random number, capital X, that can take any integer value between 0 and n as shown here. Now, because X is the discrete random variable, there is a probability associated with each of these various outcomes as shown here. P0 tells us the probability of getting 0, P1 tells us the probability of getting 1, P2 tells us the probability of getting 2, and so on. Furthermore, these set of probabilities together comprise the probability mass function for the random variable. Now comes the critical stage. We are going to introduce an auxiliary set of random variables, which we are going to call y0, y1, y2, and so on. The number of auxiliary random variables will be equal to the number of putative outcomes for our experiment. There will thus be n plus 1 of these auxiliary random variables because the outcome from our experiment can take any value between 0 and n. As shown in the equation to the right of the bottommost arrow, the value of the nth of these auxiliary random variables, yn, will be equal to 1 if the random variable capital X is equal to n and 0 otherwise. This is the meaning of the x equals n in brackets on the right-hand side of this expression. We are using an equation as a variable on the right-hand side here. 
x equals n is equal to 1 if the equation is true, and 0 otherwise. Our auxiliary random variables y0 through yn thus tell us about the value of the underlying random variable capital X. y0 is equal to 1 if x is equal to 0, and n is equal to 0 otherwise. y1 is equal to 1 if capital X is equal to 1, and is 0 if capital X has any other value. y2 is equal to 1 if capital X is equal to 2, and is 0 otherwise, and so on. Importantly, each of these auxiliary random variables is a Bernoulli random variable. So each of them have the probability mass function shown here. In other words, the probability that ym is equal to 1 is equal to the probability that capital X equals m. It is straightforward to show that the expectation of the Bernoulli random variable is equal to its parameter. Hence, the expectation of the Bernoulli random variable, whose mass function is shown here, is equal to Pm. In other words, the expectation of Ym is equal to Pm. The fact that this is expectation is equal to Pm is critical, as this is what we are going to use to estimate the probability mass function using the law of large numbers. We simply perform the experiment multiple times and accumulate a sum for each of the auxiliary random variables, the yms. When we divide these sums by the total number of experiments performed, we get our estimate for the probability mass function. This prob process perhaps seems rather involved, and it probably is when explained algebraically, as I have done on this slide. It is rather easier to understand, and perhaps even familiar, if we instead look at what is going on pictorially. This is what I will try to do on this slide here. On this slide, we are performing a relatively simple experiment. The experiment here involves the rolling of two fair dice. The numbers on the uppermost faces of these two dice are shown in the red and blue boxes on the left-hand side of this slide. We are now considering a random variable that is equal to the sum of the numbers on the uppermost sides of these two dice. So, in this case, where our dice came up 1 and 4, the sum of the two numbers, capital X, is equal to 5. Now, for two fair dice, we could work out the true probability mass function. We are not doing this in this case, however, and are instead going to estimate the probability mass function by performing the experiment multiple times. The bar chart on the right will be used to display the current estimate of the probability mass function. There will be 11 bars in this chart to represent the estimates for the probability of getting 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 respectively as the sum of the two dice. Each of these bars will represent the sums for our various auxiliary random variables, the yn's of the previous slide, divided by the number of experiments. At the moment, we have done only one experiment, and the outcome from this experiment was that capital X equals 5. This value for capital X ensured that y2, y3, y4, y6, y7, y8, y9, y10, y11, and y12 were equal to 0, and that y5 was equal to 1. Consequentially, only one of our estimates of the probability mass function is greater than 0 after one experiment. Let's now begin to roll the dice more times. The video here shows the outcome of each of the experiments in the red, blue, and green boxes on the right, and the estimate of the histogram that is accumulated from this data. What you should see as this movie progresses is that the height of one bar, and one bar only, increases every time you generate a new random variable capital X. Furthermore, the bar that increases in height is the one that corresponds to the value generated for the random variable capital X.
This process of generating a histogram based on the outcome of multiple experiments, that is the process that is illustrated on this, this slide, is hopefully something you have seen before. What this video hopefully makes clear is that the reason this histogram converges onto a single function is connected to the law of large numbers. To finish then, let's quickly review the learning outcomes that I stated at the start of this video. The purpose was to show you how we can calculate approximately prob probability mass functions by calculating histograms. Hopefully you now understand how this is done and are ready to move on to the programming exercise that will allow you to consolidate what you have learned. Thank you for your attention.